Just say I'll speak about it. So. <clears throat> what time are we starting right now sir we are just live we are about to start Good afternoon, everyone. This is Batul from IJCP, and I would like to welcome all the viewers who have joined our platform for the better exchange of knowledge that is going to be shared through this platform. So today, the topic for the session is weight gain and breast cancer risk, breast cancer awareness program. I would like to welcome all the panelists who have joined our platform, along with the moderator who is here with us today, Dr. Bhushan S. Bhagat, sir. Hey. Dr. Bhushan, sir, is Dr. Bhushan, sir, is the moderator for the session for today. He is the consultant on surgeon, MBBS, MS, MHC, FMS, MRCS, TUGSS, India Coordinator, IASO Society member. Dr. Bhagat, sir, is currently associated with Shahidri Hospital, Pune. His illustrious career spans over seven years, during which he has performed numerous critical surgeries on patients. His contribution in Pink Hope Initiative is remarkable as it marks significant step towards strengthening the fight against breast cancer in Pune. The initiative emphasis on education, awareness and support will undoubtedly benefit from the expertise and dedication of him. He has authored numerous international and national papers that delve into various aspects of cancer research. Before moving on to today's session, let us have a brief look on what the topic is about. Weight gain is a significant factor of influencing the risk of developing breast cancer in women. Research has shown a clear association between increased body weight and an elevated likelihood of breast cancer occurrence. We'll be learning more about this with the link to prevent breast cancer and improve overall well-being with the panelists who are present here with us today. So now I would like to welcome all the panelists at our forum and would like to hand over the session to Dr. Bhagat, sir, to continue from here. Sir, over to you. Thank you so much. Before proceeding, I would like to introduce all the panelists on the forum. So first of all, uh, Dr. Harit Chaturvedi, sir. He is an MBBS, MS, and MCH. He is a chairperson at Max Institute of Cancer Care. He has joined Max Healthcare in 2009 and passionately built one of the largest and finest oncology platforms in the country with over 30 years of experience. With an experience of over 30 years, he has a publications and scientific presentation in over 50 national and international conferences. He has been supporting the cause for cancer awareness and has been a crusader against tobacco for the last 15 years through various cancer foundations. He is an active member of ISO, Oncology Forum, Indian Society of Oncology, Core Cancer Foundation, ASI, Association of Breast Surgeons of India and Delhi Medical Association. Forum of IJCP. I would also like to introduce our second uh, panelist, Dr. Chinta Madaka Sai Ram sir. He is a MBBS, he is a DMRT, MDRT, FIMS. He is a director and senior consultant oncologist at Swarnasai Hospital, Hyderabad. He is currently associated with MNJ Institute of Oncology, Regional Cancer Center in Radiation Oncology, Medical Oncology, Preventive Oncology, and is a principal investigator in various clinical trials, apart from being in charge RMO for a short time. He has more than three decades of experience. He has received numerous honors, including Padma Vibhushan Mehdi Nawaj, Memorial Award, Director General's Commemoration Medal, Rhodes Scholar Award, Rashtriya Ratan Award, Academy of Medical Specialist National Award, and many more. He has been also awarded the GSS Outstanding Citizen Award by the President of India. He is a member of American Society of Clinical Oncology, European Society of Medical Oncology, International Society of Pediatric Oncology, Indian Society of Oncology, and many other prestigious societies. I welcome you, sir, on this forum. Thank you. 
I would also take uh, the pleasure to invite uh, our third panelist, Dr. Bandana Sodi, madam. She is an MBBS MD gynec, DNB obstetric gynecology, and an infertility specialist, and is currently associated with Fortis La Femme Greater Kailash Delhi and Rosewalk Hospital. She has an illustrious experience of more than 26 years and has worked at one of the best medical institutes of India, like an army hospital in Delhi, and has served patients coming from every strata of society. She holds her expertise in treating and managing conditions requiring laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, and gynec facilities ranging from antenatal checkup, painless delivery, care of pregnancies, and deliveries including high-risk pregnancies. She has received many awards and accolades for her significant contribution to medical literature. To her credit, there are many scholarly articles published as various internationally acclaimed medical journals, and she has also been invited as faculty in several national and international conferences. She is an active member of many esteemed medical organizations. I welcome you, madam, on this forum. Thank you. So as we proceed with this uh, session on breast cancer risk with weight gain, I would like to first ask Dr. Harit sir, what is the current status of breast cancer in India? So th thank you, Dr. Bhalgat, for having me here. And I want to say that this is a very important topic. Breast cancer is on the rise and we all can combat this disease just by awareness, improving awareness. And therefore, all these opportunities should be multiplied as much as we can. So we know that breast cancer is growing up, uh, increasing the incidence is on the rise and it's increasing by about 1.8% per year. So today, almost 2 lakh women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year in India. So of the 14 lakh women, people who will be diagnosed with cancer in a year, almost 2 lakh will be only breast cancer. That you can, We can understand the importance of this particular disease. And uh, it's so it is due to various factors. It is playing a very significant role. And the good part is that a good chunk of this is either preventable or can be screen detected or early detected. So high cure rates can be achieved very successfully in the management of breast cancer. And uh, <clears throat> It is affecting all state of society. It is uh, it is actually almost like a, I would say, pandemic proportions that it is. We need to improve the awareness very rapidly to on different aspects. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for your answer, sir. Uh, now I would like to address Sodi, madam. Uh, can you list the causes of breast cancer in general for our audience and also elaborate if any specific causes, age-related causes, are there? as has already been elaborated that it is one of the commonest cancers today and it is one of the commonest cause of uh, death in women and it's the second most common cancer in women and uh, the factors which can lead to it is exposure to estrogens so the factors which increase the number of your menstrual cycles and expose you to more estrogen these factors would include an early menarche and a late menopause. So this exposes you to no more number of cycles. Secondly, other factors would be nulliparity. And if the first pregnancy is beyond the age of 30 years, then no breastfeeding. And family history with history of first degree relatives having breast cancer is a very important history here. So the chances are that they... The, as a 1.8 percent fold increase if the first generation is affected, and two, if two are affected, then 2.93 times it affects the um, individual. So all these factors which expose you to a longer duration of estrogen will predispose you to the risk factor to develop a um, breast cancer along with genetic factors which are there like the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes which are, if they are there then definitely the exposure to them or the passage of these genes will predispose you again to develop breast cancer. These are the common things which are there. There are many other oh, yeah. things like lifestyle changes and inactivity and intake of alcohol and these things also enhance the chances of developing breast cancer. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your answer. So to summarize, basically, either genetic factors or the second factors, which is uh, most important, actually, the most important is estrogen, hyperestrogen. Cumulative uh, estrogen level in the body uh, is a main causative factor for breast cancer. 
So, Chinda Madaka, sir, I would uh, like to uh, ask you, can you list some common cancers related to weight gain? There have been many studies to find out which cancers are affected. Out of them, breast cancer stands to be having almost 35% higher relative risk of uh, developing breast cancer than endometrial cancer, 7.5% relative risk of uh, uh, getting cancer when compared to other uh, other population, general population. And uh, esophageal cancer, which we never thought would be having 4.8% relative risk, is uh, there. And the uh, uh, rest of the cancers like uh, uh, 3 uh, and uh, th thyroid, uh, multiple myeloma, 1.5% uh, relative risk, uh, gastric cancer, 1.8%, uh, 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 liver and colon cancers, 1.3 uh, and 1.8. Uh, uh, so these are 13. Uh, uh, Meningiomas are also there. Uh, 1.3. Uh, ORE 1.1% uh, relative risk. Renal cell carcinoma 1.8 relative risk. So about 13 cancers have been found to have a data which shows that they have a uh, higher preponderance with uh, weight gain or obesity. Thank you, sir. So basically, uh, we should know that obesity is not only a cause of cardiovascular uh, uh, ailments, a lot of cancers, including breast cancer and endometrial cancer, especially are affected by obesity. Again, coming to estrogen, which will be discussed in future in this uh, session again, how it is related. So coming back to Harit, sir. Sir, what is the link between obesity and breast cancer? Yeah. So again, what happens? Obesity is also leads to hyperestrogenemia. And it also leads to insulin resistance. So both these things and increased adipose, all these factors come into play and that has a higher incidence of uh, leads, to, leads to breast cancer. So if, it, if you can keep a low BMI, then you can control the incidence of breast cancer and therefore physical activity, diet management, all these things come into play. And uh, so the main, I would say the attribute, the reason is to estrogen plus the insulin resistance and increased adiposity. All these factors come into play. So, uh, sir, how does estrogen increase in an obese person? Uh, what is the mechanism for our audience to know? It is both. One is at the ovaries, the ovary gets in there. And the other thing is the adipose tissue. That is where the estrogen uh, breakdown happens. And that increases the circulation of the estrogen in the body, in the blood. Yes, sir. So basically, estrogen is prepared in the ovaries, but the OB, uh, the adipose tissue is the one which makes it active in simple terms. Yeah. So the more amount of adipose tissue we have, the more amount of estrogen we will have. Right, sir? Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, now coming to Sodi, madam, ma'am, what uh, does estrogen hormone also have an effect on other gynec cancers apart from breast cancer? Yes, yes. Exposure to the Estrogens will increase endometrial hyperplasia. So if the endometrial hyperplasia is atypical or complex with atypia, it can predispose you to endometrial cancers. And some ovarian cancers are also known to be associated like granular cell tumors of the ovary are also known to be associated with increased exposure to estrogens. So endometrial cancers, ovarian cancers and breast cancer. Three things which can happen because of exposure to estrogens. No. Chinta Malaka, sir, does getting involved, so now we are talking about weight gain and breast cancer. So getting involved in a weight loss program after a breast cancer diagnosis, will it help reduce the recurrence risk? It's a very specific question, sir. Yeah. Diet and exercises uh, are supposed to reduce the cancer risk by 66%. Uh, uh, bariatric surgery seems to, on an average, reduce by 38%. Uh, just physical activity alone can re reduce the breast cancer incidence by 8% and uh, prostate cancer by 6%. So most of the cancer seems to be having uh, decrease if they have uh, diet, exercise or any, uh, any other physical activity if they uh, are involved with it uh, seems to have beneficial just one minute of uh, Physical activity is supposed to reduce uh, almost uh, seven, uh, uh, I mean, like uh, seven percentage, seven percent of uh, uh, having, uh, I mean, like uh, malignant risk. 
that's what they uh, so, so physical activity what patients they have to physical activity whatever they have been doing before should be our uh, Uh, our preaching what normally is that once they are diagnosed with cancer that we tell them I mean most of the people have seem to uh, have bed rest and other things so that should not be the thing let them continue with their regular activities as far as possible and if possible try to increase uh, the physical activity and diet uh, control uh, this is the what uh, the literature says so not only before getting a breast cancer the obesity if reducing obesity is going to reduce the risk also after getting a diagnosis of breast cancer if the patient is active physically and tries to reduce weight uh, she, he or she can definitely reduce the risk of recurrence yeah yeah, yeah. almost so coming to uh, yeah yes almost just physical activity alone reduces in breast cancer by 8% and diet and exercise put together can reduce almost to a tune of 66% So Arit sir coming to the surgical part uh, does losing weight uh, decrease the risk of breast cancer especially by bariatric surgeries not only physical activity definitely definitely so finally whichever way you reduce the weight that that is going to help and bariatric surgery is one straight away straight forward something which makes an immediate effect so everything else takes time but people who are where there is a high bmi about 35 i think in those cases one should consider bariatric surgery as well not just for the cancer and prevention and uh, prevention of recurrence but also for overall health including the cardiovascular and other events so overall this is a good way of controlling weight and be a uh, low bmi kind of bmi so basically the patients who fit in the criteria of bariatric surgery they should undergo because there are two ways of benefits one is by reducing the amount of adipose tissue which will reduce the estrogen level and also bariatric surgery helps decrease insulin resistance by metabolically acting so both ways it is going to reduce the risk of breast cancer so sodi madam uh, does the menopausal state uh, status make a difference in the risk related to obesity so is a pre menopausal woman different from a post menopausal woman related to breast yes there has been a change in in the it is an inverse relation it has been seen in post menopausal when the yeah, endogenous uh, hormone production of estrogen has stopped but with weight gain what happens that the adipose is functional am i audible yes so the adipose tissue is the place where the androgens also converted into estrogens so if a post menopausal lady gains weight then the chances of estrogen exposure are again higher and that will again predispose her to a higher risk of breast cancer whereas in the perimenopausal or premenopausal it is the insulin resistance which works more and not the adipose tissue because the endogenous estrogens are present in that case so there is if a postmenopausal gains weight she is definitely more at risk of developing a breast cancer right because of the conversion in the adipose tissues so again the same factor activity maintaining the correct bmi and uh, decreasing your risk of being exposed to estrogens in the body so one shouldn't think that if menopause has set in then chances of exposure are less so it is the weight which plays a very important role here right right so estrogen being the main cause like madam said let me summarize if a female is a premenopausal female ovaries are active estrogen is there that is not the main cause of breast cancer in premenopause it is the insulin resistance in a obese premenopausal female which acts in a postmenopausal female it is the adipose tissue which is more important so uh, the rate of uh, having a risk in the postmenopausal phase is more for breast cancer compared to a premenopausal female right ma'am correct yes so i think we have lost uh, uh, shri ram sir so i would like to come back to harit sir sir what is a mammography breast density uh does it differ with age and is it related directly or paradoxically to breast cancer risk so i would like would you like me to repeat sir yeah so basically uh, mammography is the most uh, commonly used or one investigation which has helped in screening of healthy women for breast cancer so it becomes very important for us to understand the mammography and also important that digital mammography or the 
equipment should be right so that you are able to actually get a proper mammogram done because mammogram not done well may give a false sense of security or may unnecessarily lead to investigations that are not required so it is important that we have proper mammograms now what happens the density of the breast is linked with the glandular tissue and the fibrous tissue plus the fat it is a fat which causes the translucency and the glandular tissue and the fibrous tissue cause the the opacity you can say and that part is the density of the breast is reflected by the glandular and the fibrous tissue but it is important if this the breast is too dense then it becomes very difficult to pick up breast cancer easily because the screening becomes a bit difficult and therefore you need additional imaging and proper interpretation that is critical having said that with increased density there is higher propensity of uh, mild increase in the incidence of breast cancer so if you have dense breast then you need better screening and more uh, close evaluation as well so that is important and with aging this density goes down because the glandular tissue gets gradually replaced by the fat tissue or adipose tissue and that also leads to so overall i would say that density is important for risk assessment it's also important to make sure that we are able to, uh, to make sure that we are assessing the breast properly so if there's too much of density then we should do additional investigations maybe an ultrasound if required even an mri is required that should be done but make sure that we have a proper assessment done that is important Right. So basically, the density decreases with age because the fat tissue increases, but the risk also increases in a dense breast. So we have to be uh, very sure while we do the which test for a breast lump in a obese patient should be chosen wisely by the physician. So, Sodi ma'am, uh, are there any numbers which uh, you can uh, quote whether uh, how much weight is going to affect the breast cancer risk? Uh, uh, weight. So, BMI. Or uh, how much bmi will uh, affect see uh, bmi of more than 35 categorizes you into an obese status up to 30 or overweight and a bmi of 35 is obese so definitely anything starting from overweight till you reach obesity which which will expose you to uh, right so if one should be less than uh, you should be at the ideal BMI. 30 is overweight, 35 being obese. Right. So the exact criteria ma'am has quoted is 30 is the overweight, 35 is obese, 40 is morbidly obese. So every 5-point increase in BMI is going to increase the risk of breast cancer by 1.8 times. So that is the uh, risk of breast cancer in the obese person. Yes. So, uh, Sairam sir, uh, I think you have joined back. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sir, I would like to ask you, does the location of excess fat, like whether is it a central fat or a peripheral fat, whether does it matter when it comes to a breast cancer risk? Like for any like for any other disease, central fat is supposed to be the central obesity, what we call, is the risk factor for cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, diabetes, so also malignancy. Like muscle mass is uh, having more muscle mass is protective, Having more fat is a uh, is a causative uh, is supposed to be uh, more harmful. Yes. So central fat basically is more harmful than the peripheral fat. Like in other elements, similarly, yeah. breast cancer risk also increases. Yeah. Also, uh, same uh, to uh, I would like to also address uh, you only, sir, uh, Sairam sir. What are the overall benefits of maintaining healthy weight apart from cancer? Like one fifth of adult population uh, all over the world are obese, and almost 640 million are obese. So, uh, uh, this obesity is the main cause for not only malignancies, it is the main cause for diabetes, it is indirectly causing uh, malignancies, also diabetes itself is a factor for uh, malignancies, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, hypertension itself is a risk factor for cancer. So, this hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and uh, cerebral vascular accidents, all these things are supposed to be uh, obesity-related uh, uh, ill effects. So, uh, not only that we will be addressing the second commonest cause of cancer, uh, deaths in the world that is cancers, the first commonest cause of cardiovascular disease also, we will be able to address if we can have a... a and uh, the 
most we'll, we are uh, spending uh, as as per 2020 us uh, data 28 billion dollars and uh, in 2030 we'll be spending almost 66 billion dollars us dollars for uh, managing this uh, obesity uh, uh, problems including malignancies uh, uh, high cardiovascular disease and all other cases whichever are uh, i have mentioned thank you sir so i would like to address uh, harish sir uh, uh, the last question of the session sir any advice for the audience who are listening to us to reduce the breast cancer risk in general so as we all discussed this far that there are few few important factors which are leading to etiology increased incidence of breast cancer and fortunately quite a number of this can be addressed it's a lifestyle thing we can all develop the best habits and control our body weight eat the right thing keep physical activity good and avoid tobacco and alcohol so if we manage these things the incidence will go down significantly the other thing which i want to emphasize that otherwise also the breast cancer can be detected very early there is no need to ignore any symptom in breast cancer whether you feel a lump or whether you have a nipple discharge or any problem consult your physician or surgeon or gynecologist consult somebody and get a test done today ultrasound is available far and wide that's a very basic evaluation you can get it done anywhere consult an oncologist as far as you can or if it's not possible just approach a general surgeon or a gynecologist and they will give you set you for the proper first round of investigations even if you don't have any symptoms if you have a family history then also get yourself checked up and if nothing is there a healthy woman also above the age of 40 years should get a annual at least biannual checkup till the age of 50 years and after 50 at least annual checkup should be done because if you pick it up early in stage 1 breast cancer it may be 95 to 100% cure rates so we should not lose that opportunity ignoring a symptom for 2 to 3 months may lead to significant impact in outcomes and delay in diagnosis can have and you need multiple treatments and things like that so my own suggestion is that use these tools this information wisely and we all can have a better healthy life thank you thank you sir so basically we have to be alert for any breast cancer symptoms like lumps or nipple discharge or any lump in the axilla nipple retraction and annual mammography should be done by uh, as per the guidelines whatever 40 45 age group is there and sir there is one more question from the audience uh, sir does weight loss decrease the risk of breast cancer related arm lymphedema so it will have an impact on lymphedema as well so lymphedema gets worsened by infections in the arm so uh, any stimulus which is causing lymphangitis so once the person has had a surgery where the axilla has been addressed fully and especially if the person has had radiation also the probability of lymphedema goes up significantly So in today's era, if there is no negative disease, we do central node biopsy to avoid any lymphedema. Having said that, obviously there will be people who will require it and who have to undergo both surgery and radiation. So incidence is there, and this gets worsened both by infections, by lifting weights, or causing some such injury, which can have a lead to lymphangitis. With weight loss, this can go down. this will become easier to manage and obviously if you are regular on exercise even lymphedema will be less right so the man there is a one question from audience uh, like patients are on endocrine treatment for uh, early stage breast cancer like tamoxifen is going on yes. so during that uh, time does weight gain have a effect on the a better effect during that treatment also see as has been already said weight gain um, weight gain does not help in any way right it is an ideal body weight and physical activity which helps yes with tamoxifen you definitely need to monitor the uterine lining because that causes increase in the uterine lining and we need to see whether it's an effect of the estrogens because of a excess weight or because of the tamoxifen itself and uh, hysteroscopy and a biopsy is mandated if the lining increases when a patient is on tamoxifen so weight definitely will play a role where it has been said till now that weight gain is a pandemic now so uh, we need to definitely control that to have less side effects of any medications also which the patient is taking right so monitoring of the uterine lining is very important when a patient is on tamoxifen right? uh sairam sir one more question from the audience 
uh, is there an impact of the side effects of the medication when patients on maintenance therapy uh, does the side effects uh, impact the adherence and persistence to the hormonal therapy yeah it's not when we, yeah yeah when patient is on uh, chemotherapy we normally give steroids the steroids itself can cause lot of uh, weight gain uh, and uh, Uh, it can also increase the sugar levels rapid uh, 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 hypertension also can increase so steroids as low as possible preferably it can be given orally be better because body will observe whatever is required and uh, otherwise uh, uh, iv also what to the extent it is required you have to give and probably in the first cycle you may have to give full dose maybe in the later cycles you can come down with a steroid dose Uh, this all comes with the experience, uh, and uh, when we are giving chemotherapy, we have uh, uh, we have to probably uh, give more uh, anti-diabetic uh, uh, treatment and anti-hypertensive treatment more vigorously. But when the patient is discharged, probably we have to go back to their original uh, original uh, doses because when we are giving chemotherapy, we will be giving steroids, uh, fluids. Uh, so they they intend their their sugars and hypertension will be increased so during chemotherapy you have to be little bit more aggressive in controlling their diabetes and hypertension but once they are discharged you have to go, uh, taper it back to their uh, original level it is a very challenging uh, challenging method of uh, treating so also for, not only for mal, uh, for chemotherapy and other things so for uh, even surgery also if you see 30 days per post operative mortality is very high because we have we patient is immobilized they have the malignancies can cause lot of thromboembolism so we have to keep uh, thrombolytic therapies also even uh, while on chemotherapy also we are supposed to give i mean uh, low molecular heparin like uh, one one of the trials i was the investigator and it got published in asco also probably in future guidelines all these things will come come out did it answer your question uh, the query yes yes sir i just want to add one thing that surgery is quite safe for breast and today even for other oncological surgery it has become quite safe with best practices and uh, as uh, dr sairam said lmwh usage is much much higher in fact it is a routine practice for all all advanced malignancies in fact pelvic malignancies any surgery going beyond 2 2 hours all these things have to be kept into mind and prophylactic uh, low vagal heparin given is helpful in saving lot of lives so overall with today's best practices it is possible to have a safe surgery in almost all parts of the body by a well oiled team so it's very safe thank you so much uh, sirs and madam uh, to summarize i would like to say that uh, breast cancer is on a rise it is one of the most common female cancers not only in the world but also in india weight gain is a risk factor owing to estrogen and insulin resistance menopausal status does not matter uh, in the especially pre menopause post menopause we have to be very aware also there are other cancers estrogen is going to hamper like endometrial cancer is one of them obesity is going to hamper that endometrial cancer also excess fat should be controlled by either physical activity or by doing a bariatric surgery and maintaining a uh, healthy weight is not only going to prevent us from uh, breast but also other cancers so doing an annual mammography being aware of the symptoms and consulting a oncologist or onco physician immediately on uh, 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 the symptom arrival is important so this was all about today's session on breast cancer and weight Thank you